Hey, hey, what you say, food family? Mike here, and welcome back to the channel for another great culinary adventure. Today we're headed across the pond to Ireland, land of the leprechaun, and we're going to make one of my favorite St. Patrick's Day treats. I'm not talking about corned beef and cabbage, because we all do that every year, and it's great, but I'm talking about something a little more lesser known, overlooked, but just a delicious Irish Guinness stew. It's hearty, filling, and can't be beat, so stick around and I'll show you how it's done. Let's get cooking. first step to making this Irish Guinness stew is to sear off our beef. Now today I'm using boneless beef short ribs, but traditionally you're going to use chuck roast for this recipe. It's quite a bit cheaper, but I'm going to ball out today, make a fancy version for you guys. So the first step we're going to do is sear this beef off, being careful not to overcrowd the pan. So we're going to keep this probably two or three batches, maybe even four batches. Salt and pepper, high heat, just sear all sides, brown that up, put a nice uh, crisp coating on the outside so that meat stays together during this long cooking process. So. I'll sear this beef off, we'll come back and get right to the next step. All right, folks, you just saw, we seared that beef off. It's not really important to get it perfectly seared on every side. It's going to cook for a long time in the stew, so don't throw a big hissy fit about it, but give it a nice sear on a few sides at least. It adds a nice crust and flavor to our stew. Now, that being said, the next step we want to do is start working with our veggies, but our pot is dry now. We cooked all that beef. There's not a lot left, so I'm going to start out things using some pancetta. We're going to render this pancetta down, get some more fats in the pan, and move on to our vegetables. Now that being said, this is fancy and expensive ingredient. By all means, use thick sliced bacon at home. Save yourself a few bucks, especially if you're doing the chuck roast method instead of these boneless short ribs. But let's ball out today. We're going to use the pancetta. Anyway, so we'll get that pancetta cooking. Once that uh, fats start to render out of that, we'll go in with our onion. I've got a couple onions I've chopped up today. I love onion in my stew. By all means, adjust according to your own personal preference. We'll give those a couple minutes to saute in that pancetta, that rendered fats, added our minced garlic. And once that's fragrant, which should take about one minute, we'll finish things off with our celery and carrots. Again, adjust according to your personal taste. Not a huge celery and carrot fan, but they're in there because they need to be in there. So let's knock these next few steps out and we'll come back and talk about one of my favorite parts of this stew, the Guinness. folks you just saw that we cooked those veggies off in that rendered pancetta fat it, or bacon whichever one you decide to use both are delicious it is smelling wonderful in here the next step we need to do is add a bit of flour we're going to start to thicken things up so this flour will take some of that fat from the bottom of the pan not a lot just a couple tablespoons that should do it i will stir this in and let that flour start to cook off. All right, folks, well, that flour cooks into this uh, vegetable mixture. Let's move on to the best part about this recipe, and that's the Guinness. So let's give it a taste test. As always, make sure it's appropriate for our Irish Guinness stew. Cheers. Delicious as always. So we can move on to the next step. So we're basically done with our prep work here for our stew. We're going to add our meat back to the pot, mix everything together. I'm going to add... Two bottles of Guinness, I'm gonna really make it delicious Guinness flavor today. We're gonna to add a couple bay leaves, some thyme, a little bit of tomato paste, mix all that together, and I'm gonna to top everything off with some beef broth just to make sure the meat is covered. Once it's covered, we're gonna put the lid on and let this simmer at a low to medium low temperature for two hours. After two hours, we'll take the lid off, give it a stir, let it go for another 30 to 45 minutes to finish off. 
We'll come back, give it a taste test, see how we did. All right, folks, welcome back. Our Irish gonna do a simmer for two hours. Let's take the lid off, see how it's looking. Looking pretty good to me. Let's give her a stir. Now what we're gonna do is let this keep going for another 30 to 45 minutes. That'll start thickening everything up. Cook off those excess liquids. Make a nice, thick, hearty stew. So let this simmer away another half hour, 45 minutes. We'll come back, give a taste test, see how we did. All right, folks, we simmer our Irish Guinness stew for another 45 minutes. It's thickened up. It is looking delicious, but looks are only half the battle. Let's give it a taste test and see if we pulled off the impossible and made the most delicious ever Irish Guinness stew. Folks, all I can say is check that link in the description below. Go to my website. Check out the recipe for this one because it is just that damn good. Those boneless beef short ribs, that meat just falls apart. If you use chuck roast, it should come out the exact same after so long of a slow cooking process. Carrots are nice, tender. So much flavor in the broth by itself. I can't begin to even describe how much flavor is in this soup. Got a nice salty pepper flavor in the background from the uh, celery and whatnot. I don't know what else to say, folks. We nailed this one here today. So that being said, if you like this video, what I made here today, be sure to click that subscribe button. Give this video a like. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you would have done different or if you really like how I did this here. Now, obviously, we made ours a little fancy day using boneless beef short ribs for the beef. We did the pancetta instead of regular bacon. That obviously elevated this a little bit more than a standard version at home. But either way, Use chuck roast. Use regular bacon. It's going to come out amazing. I don't know what else to say. I'll see you next time, folks. Until then, Mike here signing off. Just keep cooking.